Hello and welcome to Improve Your Voice, aka Vocabilities.com. My name is Darren McStay, and today I'm giving a quick review on the voice of the actor Benedict Cumberbatch. My first memory was being a town crier. Now this has been requested by a few people out there, so I'm not going to mention any names today. Sorry, but big shout out to you anyway. I thank you for sending that in and the reason I'm covering him is because I think this is the last actor I'm going to do for a while and the reason it's the last actor I'm going to do for a while is because actors generally train their voice so they already have a head start and they're already at kind of peak performance so by reviewing them I'm, I'm pretty much going to give you similar uh, answers and I'm going to be talking about them in a way which might make some of you out there feel like it's hard to reach. So I want to really focus on public speakers or, or people who are in the, the limelight who aren't necessarily trained or haven't trained their voice. So we can see what they're doing wrong as opposed to always what they're doing right. That to me is a little bit more interesting. But also don't worry too much about that. I, I'm interested in listening to your voices. And of course I've been reviewing some of yours. So you can get in touch, leave a comment below if you want to, you know, maybe uh, if you've got an issue that's not been covered yet and we can talk about. Because I want to keep it fresh. I don't want to keep going over the same old ground. But anyway, today Benedict Cumberbatch was asked for more than most people, so uh, that's why I'm doing it today. And once I've got this out of the way, I've got a few others that I've been repeatedly asked for, which I'm going to get to. Not actors, though, actually, business people, politicians, speakers, and, and, and other sorts like that, which is going to be quite exciting. Let's take a look at a short clip of Benedict Cumberbatch speaking, and we can talk about it afterwards. As far as doing stuff at school, I think my first memory was being a town crier in a weird sort of fairy tale fantasy. And I, I, I remember, I, one of the reasons I remember is there was a video of it. And I, um, I came on the middle of the stage and clashed these big symbols and sort of announced very proudly what was about to happen or that part of the story, just sort of moving the narrative on. <laughs> but when I watched it back at the video, I just, I did that. And then I stopped in the middle of the stage whilst the other people were coming on and just turned around and looked at it <laughs> instead of getting off stage. But um, I think my early acting memory is probably that, and I remember it being a big hall. I can't remember where it was, but it felt big and quite scary. It's interesting with Benedict how it's similar to a Rachel Maddow and I think also Donald Sutherland, who I reviewed, that he's quite tall. He's quite tall, but he's very thin, and he's got a very long neck, and he's got a very long head, a long face, which already indicates to me how some of the ways that he's making his sound. Now, this is one another reason why I don't want to keep going over actors, especially tall, thin ones like I keep doing, is because it's, it, to me it's kind of clear. Uh, because he's done voice work and he has an instrument that's shaped a certain way, he's going to kind of create a certain sound. But he's, because he's not a big man, he's very thin, he's very slight, it's interesting how he can make such a big sound. And he can, without any effort. Now, it's clear to me that his nasal cavity on the inside in his skull is very kind of wide. It's very big. There's a big space in there. And so when he's resonating, when he's talking, you can really hear it resonating in that chasm, in that space. Even though he's not really nasally, you can, he uses his nose, he can't avoid the sound reverberating in there. And so he gets this very full sound from his face, um, probably less from his chest, even though it, I think he's very well balanced. And what's important to notice about this isn't necessarily the size, it's also to do with the relaxation in his body that allows the vibrations to flow freely up through his nasal cavity and out his mouth as well. And that's relaxation. So what this is, is resonance. And I can't stipulate enough how important that is for vocal health, for vocal safety, for clarity of speech, and for reaching others and actually having a voice. Because resonance is the ability to have volume without any effort at all. Because of the relaxation, there's no restrictions for the airflow. And because of the, if the chasms are clear and everything is functioning as it should, your posture is correct and everything else is in place. When you speak, you just only have to concentrate on the words you're using because your voice is there for you. And here's the thing, when people concentrate and worry about why their voice isn't loud enough or why they mumble or why they have any issues, it's generally physical. So when you do the kind of work that he's done and interestingly enough, he went to RADA, I believe, which is the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. And I went to East 15, which is just around the corner. And I, the person who taught me voice, 
who was my favourite voice coach, was became the head of voice at RADA. Now here's an interesting fact. Acting schools only really in the last, well RADA especially, that I know, but only 25 years ago really started doing acting classes. Now RADA's like very well established, it's been around a long time and have only really recently started doing acting classes. Before that, it was movement and voice. Just, that's it, movement classes and voice classes, and then and you get, and they get together and, and do lots of productions. So that's very interesting, that voice and movement, being able to move their body and be free with it in order to be able to act, and also to be able to use their voice in a certain way, because a lot of these acting training was designed for theatres, where you had massive auditoriums of 1,200, 2,000 people. And so the voice was that important. Now I met Benedict Cumberbatch once when I was at the National Theatre and I shook his hand and said hello and he asked me how the show had gone because I was in a show there at the time called Emperor and Galilean and he was rehearsing for Frankenstein I believe. And I also at one point sneakily snuck into a rehearsal that they were having for Frankenstein because I didn't actually get a chance to see the show. And he was in this huge rehearsal space and without any effort was able to fill the room with sound. That is someone who's dedicated their life to their voice and to their instrument and making sure that it works for them. So he's got a very healthy voice, very clear, very resonant, very uh, articulate. But here's an interesting thing. He's also got a slight lisp. He's got a tongue which sits quite low in his mouth and it seems to be, you can see it when he talks. And also, he's got a very long face, and he's got a chin that sticks out slightly. Just you know, slightly more like that. And so with his tongue like this. As far as doing stuff at school, I think my first memory was being a town crier in a weird sort of fairy tale fantasy. And I, I, I remember, and one of the reasons I remember is there was a video of it. And, and sometimes he mumbles some of the words he says. But sometimes it works, it's quite cool, but his lips, his articulation, is very clear, so he's very precise, very light. Uh, he sends his air to his gum ridge. I think he's got a, a, you know, a typical RP accent. But it's interesting to see how his body is shaped. So he's got this big resonance, this huge cavity inside his nose, and he's very relaxed. So this sound is able to flow freely without any effort. But then he's got this uh, relaxed tongue and a chin that juts forward slightly, and his his very his posture is very upright, and. Uh, it's just interesting to notice that that's what creates the sound he has. He's got a very small mouth and a very small jaw and he's kind of tucked forward at the front like that. And he says things in a rather cool, relaxed manner. He's a very laid back speaker and very natural and very relaxed with himself and comfortable. And of course that's another contributing factor to being comfortable as a speaker and that can help. So yeah, that's it. I think I'm not going to do any more actors for a while because they're clearly people who spend lots of hours, they do daily work on their body to ensure that they have the voice. And for actors, their voice is their paycheck, so it's in their interest too. And they train to do that. And so if you want to have a better voice, you can do daily consistent training. It's as simple as that. I mean, like, here's the point where I should be like really promoting my eight week online course because that sets you up with a plan to do that. But it doesn't matter because on my channel, you have enough information now. You have enough. You've got a full 20 minute body warm up. You've got breathing exercises. You've got articulation exercises. You've got exercises on resonance and relaxation. So there's really no excuse if you want to get a better voice. You can't just search through my channel and find those videos and better your speaking ability. I hope you do, and thank you so much for watching. But again, like always, send a comment, leave a comment. If you know any speakers or business people or politicians that you want me to check out their voice, that to me is a lot more interesting than actors because actors are a bit too easy to cover. Leave us a comment anyway, say hi, tell me where you are in the world. I'm interested, I'm keen to meet you. This is a community we're growing here, so talk to each other as well. You know, give each other support. There's a lot of people watching this channel who have some serious vocal issues and some self-confidence issues surrounding their voice. So, you know, we can help each other here. We can actually make this a place that people can you know, feel safe and talk and just improve in their own time in the safety of their own homes. <laughs> All right, so thanks again for watching, guys. I'm Darren McStay. This is Vocabilities.com, aka Improve Your Voice. And until the next time, look after your voice. <laughs>